Wow, awesome. Hi, welcome back to my channel. I want to share with you today about something that I've had a lot of pleasure of doing over the last few months, and that is making my own watercolor sketchbooks. I was um, recently, I joined Emma Carlisle's Patreon, which is delightful. And there was some chatter in one of the videos um, about sketchbooks and how expensive they are, and especially the watercolor sketchbooks with the nice papers. And I thought, oh, this maybe is a nice thing to share because people may be interested. So um, in a minute, I'm gonna put you overhead so you can see everything um, that I've been making. My latest and greatest is this lovely um, sketchbook that is using an old cover from a Time Life um, book. And I filled it with a mix of different kinds of papers, watercolor papers, heavier watercolor papers, and some colored papers. Um, so I'm going to tell you in this video about prices, materials that I use, tools that I needed to start this, and a little bit of comparisons between if you buy a book that is somewhat comparable, um, what it would cost versus if you make it yourself. Um, the good news is you can you can save, especially if you are looking for a really high quality watercolor paper um, in your sketchbook, then the savings are significant. The more interesting thing is you have a lot more freedom to decide what kind of papers you want and how you want to put them in. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when I put you overhead. All right, let's move you over. All right, here we are. Here we are with my collection of books that I've made. And starting with the very first one, this is what got me started in making books. And I did a terrible job of stitching it together. Um, which I guess you can't really tell, but I did my best on this book, which was for um, my wedding 24 years ago. And the reason why I was interested in making my own, like the guest sign-in book, is because I didn't like the sort of flowery options that were out there, and I felt they were very expensive for what they were and what they represented and I wanted something that represented um, our marriage and so I used a bark cloth which comes from my husband's village um, like in Uganda they make this bark cloth from trees anyway I can talk more about that if you are interested let me know in the description below or in the comments below if you're interested in in that I have some of that and then I wanted to make a cutout for a picture and I wanted it to be black pages that have, um, you know, using um, a special pen. So anyway, this was special. This was my first try. And this is when I bought the major materials that I use for, um, for making this. And I'll tell you what, the most important materials besides the threads, which you buy ongoing, those are the consumable parts, are the awl, a bone folder, a straight edge, the biggest one that you can find, a steel ruler, and then a mat. This is an Alvin mat that is 24 by 20, 24, 18 by 24, this mat that protects my table. I have a couple of mats because sometimes I go bigger. And then something to store it in. Oh, and a needle that has um, a big enough eye to take the waxed thread. So these are the main tools that I use. I just looked on Amazon and there are some kits that you can buy that can get you started for about $7. And then you'll have to buy the steel ruler and the mat to protect your table. So here are the watercolor sketchbooks that I've been putting together lately. And let's start with the smallest one. This one I put together just because 
um, I had a watercolor block that I wasn't using very much and I felt that if I made a little sketchbook out of it I would use it more so what I did is I just used the remaining pages in the watercolor block so it's an arches watercolor block very very nice paper and let's see it was a it's five and a half by eleven and a half block and I cut down the rest of the pages and then I cut the back piece which is that hard block at the back of a watercolor block if you don't know what I'm talking about I may have to edit oh here we go Here's a really small Arches watercolor block. And at the back, there's this board that is supposed to be your board for, you know, working on. And it's great material for making a cover because it's kind of not very heavy, but it's light and um, sturdy. So what I did is I just covered it over with the inside of a children's book that is illustrated by Alan Marks. This children's book came from a library bookstore or a library book sale, and so it was like a dollar, and the pages are kind of warped, and uh, you know, some are torn. And so I thought, I'll just cut the pages out and glue them down, and they will get rid of that warped look. And so this is quite lovely. It feels really good and it's just a like a like a six by six um, I like the, the back because this came from something that came in the mail from us for to us and it had a nice um, watercolor -y or gouache maybe um, artwork so that's the smallest one and I can't tell you much about the price since I already had the watercolor block and I just wasn't using it. But this size of block, I think when I last looked, it was like $27. Um, and that would be comparable to buying a little square, um, 140 pound Arches watercolor paper sketchbook. But I get to have my own cover, which I like a lot. Then there's a couple of books that are about the same size, a six by eight. And I like the portrait orientation, so that's what I used. And again, these covers are just found objects from somewhere. I don't even know. This might be from a watercolor block, and I think this is from just some book that was left on the side of the road, this, this cover. Um, so this one I made from some cold, no, some hot press, which is a very smooth paper. And again, it came, it's an Arches um, hot press, 140 pound. And I thought, I'm not using this block very much. Let me make it into something that I will start to use. And so it's, this has been good. This is my first um, attempt at using the Coptic stitch. And that's when I went and bought the threads, these um, waxed threads. And this has been great. It's made me use that smooth paper. I still have a few pages in the back that I can use and um, it sits nicely. Um, what I mean, when I'm talking about that, I'm foreshadowing <laughs> with this one. With this one, the next one I made, I have this, um, oh, I forget what it's called, but it's these, these things I found in my sewing supplies. And I needed them because when I stitched it, I stitched it a little tight and I also put in these little um, papers that wrap around each of the signatures because I thought it would be fun and cool but it made it kind of pop open like that so I had to attach something so I could tie it together so it won't be popping open like that and this one is made with some really high quality paper this is 156 pound arches that came from the roll that I have a video of me cutting pages from the roll, this gigantic roll of watercolor paper. And then I have to iron it and flatten the papers and stuff. So this is very high quality paper, um, really fun to work on and um, not something you would actually ever find 
um, for sale as a watercolor book. There isn't the highest that I've seen is 140 pound um, that you can get in an etcher. So yeah, so I've been having a lot of fun working in this and I think I need to make another book that has some of this high, high quality paper that I can really scratch into, use my stick um, and, and get really wet and have no problem. Perhaps I'll make one that's even bigger than the six by eight that this is. So after I kind of got my feet under me with stitching with the Coptic binding, a little later in the summer, I made another one. And again, I used the back of a block because I just, I guess I've been storing up those backs of blocks that um, thinking they might be useful for something. And then these maps that I got are again from somebody else discarded a, an old atlas in my neighborhood and I picked it up because I think it's awesome. These are really like some of these countries, Sudan isn't this big anymore because there's South Sudan and there's some that um, like Upper Volta is named something else now. So um, I like that. Um, I like having the old maps. And what I used in here is, turns out, that it is a Fabriano Artistico 140 pound and cold press. So this has been quite wonderful because it takes a lot of water. It is, it's been a very kind of happy size for me. Um, it's not too heavy because I only put in four signatures that each have two big sheets, right? But then you stitch it together. Um, and this is, this has really been a really good companion for me um, this summer. So now that this one is nearly complete and I thought, let me try some cheaper papers that have a lower count that aren't as thick. And I'd been wanting to use these covers from these discarded, I have a whole bunch of them, discarded Time Life. Here's another one that I'm in the process of making um, and another one that's on deck. Ugh, they're so great because they're so unique and um, I like the size. Um, incidentally, I just started going back to acupuncture and so I love this for the seasonality in my life that I'm going back in for acupuncture and um, I'm starting with this sketchbook that is um, about acupuncture in 1973. So I stitched this together and I just did three signatures, but I used this paper called Montball. So I put the colored papers, that's a different kind, that's um, called Tiziano, but this paper is is called Montaval, and I found it at Blick when I went down there last weekend for, oh my gosh, I think the list price was like $1.65, but then if you buy a whole bunch of them, you get it for even less. So I think each page, big page 22 by 30, was like a dollar forty, And so when I cut it down, each of these pages comes out to being like, 11 cents or something like that. So I felt, oh, this is great because this will give me the freedom to do some kind of sketching. And so these sketches are all from Emma Carlisle's Patreon, um, what she called Fast Frogs, where you sketch only for like, this is only four minutes, and this is five minutes, and back here we have a two minute. And this, um, working on cheaper paper that doesn't make me feel like I need to spend adequate amount of time on it, gave me the freedom to just go for it. Um, this is another one of Emma Carlyle's Patreons where we did bears and hedgehogs very fast, two minutes. Really, really lovely. I highly recommend um, joining her Patreon if you're not there already. Um, I've had such a good time so far this one was half an hour, so quite a bit more time. And I have a few more pages in there. So here's what I did that's totally different with this book, is I put in one signature that is bounded by my dark Tiziano, 
and then it has all of this Montval, the cheaper paper. And then I did one signature of Fabriano Artistico. So I have some pages where I can do a longer painting or sketch, not the quick, quick stuff. And then at the end, another one of these Montval bounded by the Tiziano end papers. Um, yeah, so I can try having different papers in the same sketchbook. And so um, I'm gonna see how I get on with that. I think it'll be quite lovely. Um, what else do I want to show you or tell you? This is it for the books that I've made. And I tell you, oh, I wanted to tell you about costs. So <clears throat> I did some back of napkin calculations. And here's, here's what I found in the end. So I was a little confused at first. And you might have the same thing of when they say, for instance, I went online and looked at Etcher Mixed Media, hardbound, right? And it says 26 sheets and 52 pages. So 26 sheets to them means that this is a sheet and then each page, this is a page and this is a page. So each side is a page. So that's pretty important when I'm comparing to what I've made. So if I make a similar, so I, a similar book that has 24 sheets and 48 pages, and if I'm using this nice watercolor paper, this Fabriano Artistico, 140 pound, then my paper cost is only $16.57. And as you know, I'm finding my covers for free so far. And these, um, these threads, in fact, I'm just about to go and buy some more threads because um, I found that they make this in white. These threads come, uh, I think, 20 yards per spool and I buy three spools for 12 or $13. So the cost becomes quite negligible on each book. But if I add like a dollar for each book, then I would say, you know, a book that's this size that has um, 48 watercolor pages would be like 17 or $18. And if I bought a similar book, so the Etcher Mixed Media is 110 pound or 230 GSM. So it's a bit lighter paper. And that one costs almost $40 for the 26 sheets and 40, 52 pages. So it's not um, totally apples to apples because they give you a few more sheets, but it's less, it's less weight. Um, but then I looked at the Etcher, the perfect sketchbooks that only come in two sizes and they're both landscape orientation. So they're like this where you fold it out this way. And those have 140 pound or 300 GSM papers inside and 22 sheets, 44 pages, their cost for a similar size, 8.3 by 11.4, is I think the A4, almost A4, <clears throat> that's almost $54, whereas I'm getting a very similar, actually I'm getting a little bit more page count for 16, 17, maybe $18, depending on how much you account for all of the sunk costs of your bone folder and your awl and a little bit of thread. <clears throat> so anyway, in the final accounting, you can save a lot of money and you can get what you want. <clears throat> now, when it comes to stitching these up, I suggest you go look at um, a YouTuber called why am I forgetting her name right now? I'll just put it on the screen. She describes how to do this very, very well. And the other thing that I would say is for your first few, be very, very gentle on yourself. Um, if you, if it doesn't look super beautiful, like see here, it looks like I've missed like a stitch in between these two middle signatures. I don't care. I never look at the stitching once I'm done and it holds the book together just fine. So all's good. All is good. 
So that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this little thing um, to explain how I, how I make my books and what I've been doing. Um, I really enjoy it. Leave me a note in the description or in the comments below if you have any other ideas or things that you might have done with your own sketchbooks. I'm really curious about what other kinds of combinations I might put together. And um, yeah, all right. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. Bye.